Good morning from the kitchen folks. Today it's another experimental day in home brewing where I'm going to have a go at making a dark honey Rausch beer. I'm using three different grains in this brew. I'm going to use 500 grams of Weyermann's Rausch malt. I'm going to use 500 grams of Weyermann's Vienna malt and I'm going to use 100 grams of Ballyhoo crushed roasted barley. I'm going to add my grains into my big pot. I'm adding to my grains a full five litres of spring water and I'm using spring water because I live in Leeds and the tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine so I prefer to be safe rather than sorry. So I'm going to give that all a good stir and a good mix and get them all integrated together. Make sure there's none sticking to the bottom. And I'm just going to put that on low and I'm now going to leave it for a couple of hours for the temperature to increase and for the malts to do their stuff and for the magic to come out of them. I'm using a liquid German ale yeast with this brew. This has been in the fridge. It needs to warm up a little bit or it needs to get to room temperature for two or three hours. This is yeast nutrient that I'll feed it with when it's got up to temperature before I add it into the uh, wort. I'm also going to use a very small amount of champagne and sparkling wine and cider yeast, which is from Lalvin. This will get it going and start the fermentation almost instantaneously. The ale yeast takes a couple of days before it really kicks in. So that will start it off and that will keep it going. So I'm still learning as I'm doing and I might even be doing it wrong, but I don't know. But, you know, the beer seems to be OK so far that I've been making. So this is a very long, slow process. I'm just warming these grains through. This has been on now for 45 minutes. The water's got warmer. You can see that there's beginning to be a little bit of foam on top. And eventually this will come to the boil. But I want it to just be warm for quite a while first for the malts to release all their goodness into the water. The wort's now been on the heat for a good three hours. I've kept it at a nice sort of temperature and I'm now going to move it across to boil onto a larger ring. And I'm going to get it simmering and leave it for an hour. And just to point out that I'm doing this without a lid on purposefully so I get rid of the sulphide smells uh, that you get in grain. If you keep a lid on you end up with cabbagey tasting beer and I don't want that. I'm going to take my ale yeast and I'm going to pour most of it, but not all of it, into there. I'm going to add to it a little bit of yeast nutrient to waken it up. Then I'm just going to place the lid back on without screwing it shut. And I just want that to now sit and start to uh, come alive. So now the wort has come to the boil. I'm just going to turn the heat down a little bit and let it simmer. And I'm going to leave it now for an hour. Hopefully the spoon will prevent any boil overs. So it's been an hour. I've switched the heat off. Just giving it a stir. And I'm going to leave it now to cool a little and stew in its own juices. So my wort's been standing now for 90 minutes. It's cooled down nicely. And I'm now going to get this filtered. It's going to go into the damage on, through a sieve, fire a funnel, down we go. I'm just using a ladle to transfer, everything's been nicely cleaned, and in we go. So the first thing I want to try and do is extract as much of the malt as possible. And then using the back of the ladle to press the malt to get the water out of it. And you'll see as I press, 
it squirts down. Now I don't want to overdo this because I don't want to get a ton of sediment. It's only a one gallon five litre demijohn and I'd like to get if possible five 750 ml bottles out of this although re realistically I'm probably going to get four. 4.5 is how I seem to average. The wet spent grain which is in the sieve I'm just going to put into this baking tray and keep doing that until it's full. And once you've already got quite a few grains out you can try pouring. And that's an absolutely beautiful chocolate colour. Look at that brown. It's just the right amount of the uh, roasted barley to give it that colour. I'm just adding a little more spring water into a saucepan. And I just want this to warm up a little. I'm going to take some of that warmed water and just add it into this glass. The rest of it is going to go back onto the heat because I need this to come to the boil now. Into the water which is only sort of, it's just lukewarm, just hand warm and that's all I want it. I'm adding a small amount of Lalvin champagne yeast. So just that. Now look at that drop and it'll love the warm water and this yeast activates very, very quickly. And I'm going to be putting both of these yeasts into my beer. As the rest of the water warms up, I'm adding into it an entire jar of honey. This will whack up the gravity and the ABV. It hopefully will also give it a little bit more of a nice rounded flavour. So I want to keep stirring the honey until I'm satisfied that it's not stuck to the bottom of the pan and it doesn't seem to be. The water already feels nice and buoyant. I'm also going to add into the pan roughly 100 grams of sugar and I'm going for the high ABVs so I'm just giving it that boost. I prefer a strong beer to a weaker beer. I don't really do session ales and it's just a personal preference of mine to drink less strong beer than more weak beer. I just need to get the sugar to dissolve as well now. I don't need this to come to the boil really, I just want it all to dissolve. I'm now going to add this liquid into the wort. Just going to add a bit more spring water and then add that as well. Just a little bit more for good luck. I've still got to get the yeast in. And there, look, that's what activating yeast in warm water looks like. It's done that all on its own. Now, anybody who is a brewer at home is going to be saying to themselves, Well, you've put too much in there, and I have put too much in there. I've overfilled it on purpose because I know that I'm going to end up with a sediment to about that level. I want to get the maximum amount of beer as possible and I need to take some out to measure the gravity and I need to add the yeast in which is going to take up a little bit more room. So I want to get this as close as possible to the top and yes it will form a big foamy head on top which is called a Krausen. And that will probably come out of the top but to begin with I'm going to use something called a blow-off pipe instead of an airlock so if I do get any gunge expelled from this it'll be safely disposed of and it isn't going to harm the beer by letting any contaminants in. So here's my hydrometer jar which I will test the gravity of the beer in. I've just rinsed it. Demijohns aren't the easiest things to pour from. That's enough. So here's my hydrometer and it's with this that I'm going to take the original gravity. And it's lovely and buoyant. 
and I'm starting off with an original gravity of 1070, 1070 exactly. So what comes out of the hydrometer flask is going to go down the sink because I don't want to risk any contamination. I just think it's safest, it's only a very small amount. Now I've got to get the yeast now into here but it's just a little bit on the warm side yet. I want it to cool down a bit more before I add the yeast because I don't want the temperature to kill the yeast. The wort has cooled to a nice temperature it's not much warmer than the hand so I'm going to risk putting the yeast in now. That's it. I don't want it all sticking to the bottom and in we go. One swift motion. Here's my beer yeast. Let's hope that that happens again and in that goes. So what I will get is a Krausen forming. You can already see the edges of it now. From the yeast it will form up and it will probably come out of the blow off pipe and if it does that's fine it won't do any harm and I'll get as much beer as I can out of this one damage on. I forgot to mention that you just need to mix it in a little bit as well. So I'll just do that. It's a really lovely chocolate brown. I look forward to seeing the final results. So here I've got a cider, a mead, a Rausch beer, another mead, and now I've got this dark Rausch beer. I'm going to pop that in. The other end goes into there and you'll see it's full of water. So we just need to start to wait for the bubbles to appear and we know that the fermentation is happening. So it's the next morning and fermentation is happening and you can see the logic in having the blow off pipe. So we've got a steady stream of bubbles coming through and this is actually going to pick up the pace and it will go faster than this in a couple of days time. But yeah, after its initial eruption, it's just going nicely. Good afternoon from the kitchen, folks. It's dark honey Rausch beer clearing day. So this has been fermenting fantastically. In fact, it's been fermenting for 34 days. And it's only in the last 24 hours that this has happened and the fermentation has stopped. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to clear it. I'm going to remove it from the sediment, the trub at the bottom, and uh, then we're going to see how it turns out in a few days after that. So it's bung out. Siphoning tube in. And that is just above the sediment level. It literally is just there. So that's where I'm going to leave it. The clip's doing a good job for me. And as usual, the fun bit. I'm siphoning into my brew bucket, which I've cleaned and sterilised on the inside. I don't have a spare damage on. It does increase the risk of contamination, but hopefully not. Let's have a little try. got a really powerful smoky smell. Well that's good. That's definitely a Rausch beer. It's somewhere in between a Rausch beer and a porter. Is there such a thing as a Rausch porter? Maybe I've made a Rausch porter. Very very Moorish if you like dark beers, definitely. So I'm using Clear It Wine Finings from Young's. It's a two-step process and I'm going to begin by adding Finings A. That's enough. And this needs to mix in. I leave it for an hour and then I add Finings B, which is in the other bottle. It's an absolutely beautiful colour in the tube. Chocolate brown. Really nice. 
And there we go. Bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tells me that the siphoning is over. So this is what I've got. But rather than leave it in the bucket for the next hour, I'm going to clean the demijohn out and pour it back into the demijohn. So I'm going to send the trub and the yeast down the sink. I could try harvesting the yeast, but I don't really want to. Although I am going to start doing that with some of the uh, lighter beers that I do in future. That's clean enough. So I've put my funnel in the demijohn and I'm simply going to now tip this back in. And this will definitely ensure that the fine ends and the beer are mixed together. So airlock back in. And we'll come back to this in an hour and add fine ends B. Well it's been an hour and fine ends A has done a grand job. As you can see there is quite a build up of sediment there. So before I add fine ends B I'm going to siphon this again above the sediment level to get rid of all this. Once again. Slightly unfortunate doing it twice because it means I am losing more beer but at the same time it means I want to get a clearer beer so I'll definitely get four 750ml bottles whether I get five I don't know so there's the siphoned beer again and I'm now going back to my demijohn with findings B. That's enough for that. And now I'm adding back in again. That's all done. Bung back in. And now I'm going to leave this for a few days and see what happens in terms of sediment build up down here. Morning from the kitchen folks, it's Rausch Porter bottling day. So there it is, it's been clearing now for a week since I put the finings in and there's been no more sediment build up apart from that very very tiny layer at the bottom so I'm quite happy now to siphon this straight into the bottles which have been sterilised. So it's bung out, siphoning tube in and it goes right to the very bottom the damage on just there slightly above the sediment level a couple of mils above it before i start siphoning i'm just going to add some carbonation drops into the bottles it's one drop per 250 ml so that's three drops per bottle and now the fun bit so i'm filling my hydrometer flask first because i want to take the final gravity to work out the alcohol percentage and then i'm onto my bottles I should hopefully get definitely four full 750ml bottles. If I'm lucky, I'll get five. We'll see. So the colour has definitely lightened. If you can see in the tube there, it's a much lighter brown. It's definitely opaque. I can see through the tube. Can't see through the demijohn, but I can see through the tube. It's a very nice colour, actually. There we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube, that means it's over. So it's time to take the final gravity of the beer, drop my hydrometer in, and that has sunk very nicely. So a final gravity of 1.014, So I now need to work out the alcohol by volume of my Rausch Porter. So I take the original gravity, which was 1.070. I subtract from it the final gravity, which was 1.014, which gives me a figure of 0 
and then I multiply this by 131.25 and that equals a final alcohol by volume of 7.35%. Now I need to stress that this might be slightly inaccurate because I took the original gravity with the wart to warm. So that might have impacted on the final reading. But for the purposes of labelling my bottles, I'm going to say it's 7%. So I managed to get five bottles just. And they're now on the sink. I've got my bungs here. These are plastic bungs which I've bought from Amazon. You can reuse them, but you've obviously got to sterilise them in between. They're quite difficult to push in, so what I usually do is uh, soften them in hot water first to make them more malleable. So here it goes. One. Two. Three. Oh. There we go. That bloody hurts. So my five bottles are bunged, and now they need caging. And these will prevent the bungs from flying off. The cages are all recycled from bottles that we've bought or what friends have bought. It's a good idea if you're going to get into brewing to get your friends involved as well by donating their unused bottles and cages if you want to use champagne bottles or beer bottles if you're using beer bottles. And every now and again it's going to cost you a bottle here and there but it's worth it in the long run. I'm just going to rinse the bottles off now to get any sticky residue off. I hate sticky bottles. And there we go, that's my bottles labelled. So I'm now going to put these away for a month and then I'll be cracking open the first one to see how it is. So I'll see you later folks. Evening folks, it's Roush Porter opening night. Quite excited about this one. It's been conditioning for a month and uh, yeah, let's just see what happens. So hopefully I'm going to get a nice uh, appearance, a good pour, a bit, bit of a head maybe, be nice. Um, obviously I want it to taste nice and it'd be good if it had a good beery smell as well. I've got no idea how active or inactive it's going to be. Let's see what happens. Right, yeah, we've got a bit of vapour, small pop, nothing dramatic. Let's see how it pours, see how it looks. Okay, there's not much in the way ahead, that was an out. Let's have a look at it. Okay, it looks more like Coca Cola than a porter, I'm going to be honest. It smells like a Rausch beer. And it smells like a porter. So, Rausch Porter was a good name for it. Let's have a see what it tastes like. It tastes really good. Wow. It's sweeter than I expected. The smokiness comes through from both the Rausch malt and also from the crushed barley, which is obviously toasted. So that's going to give it um, a burnt toffee taste. Actually, it tastes really good. It just does, I wish it looked a little bit more like a beer in terms of head retention or head at all. But do you know what? It tastes nice. And that's the main thing, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, really like it. Really like it. Anyway, cheers, folks. I'll catch you on the next brew. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www dot mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films it really is very much appreciated if you haven't already done so please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload you can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk please click on the red subscribe button when you've done that a little bell will appear if you press that also then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming then you might also like my travel channel which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again if you could subscribe to that channel it would be hugely appreciated. 
If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.